Hey cruisers, you've got cruise questions and we have answers. Well, hopefully, if we don't, we'll try to point you in the right direction, but welcome to our live stream. We are so happy to have you here today. We're gonna hang around for about 45 minutes and do an all cruise Q&A and then a little bit later today in the chat, we are going to have questions for you about what you'd like to see from Cruise Tips TV in 2019. Don't tell us yet because we want everything nice and tidy in the chat so we can watch it in the replay a little bit later so hold those thoughts start thinking about what you'd like to see from us but don't type it yet please 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 wait for us today's episode is sponsored by cruiseline.com where you can find reviews tips and photos from real everyday cruisers we have as always linked to cruiseline.com in the description of this video if you haven't checked it out already if you haven't written a review about your last cruise or read reviews about your next cruise get on up in there and do it folks so what do you say let's start this q a session off we are ready to answer your questions today we are at your service for 45 minutes if the chat gets crazy busy and for some reason your question does not get answered i have a secret way for you to reach me that generally works really well. And that is to send me a direct message on our Facebook page, Cruise Tips TV, all one word, no spaces. So slide into my DMs over there if I miss you today and I'll do my best to answer. Things have gotten really busy here on our YouTube channel and sometimes it's difficult for us to answer questions in a prompt fashion, partly because we get so many comments. And th the fact that we get so many comments isn't really the issue. The issue is that we have to weed through a lot of comments. Um, some of them are pertinent and some of them are not, and that takes a lot of time. That slows down getting those questions answered. So the live streams are great for questions and answers, and Facebook DMs are also great. So let's get to it. Mr. Cruise Tips TV, do you want to start queuing up some questions, or can I go ahead and start by grabbing some? Yeah, it's all me? Okay, sounds good. Let's see what we've got here. I know everybody has been talking about Carnival's new room service policy in the pre-chat, so let's talk a little bit about that before we, before we start, because I know that's been a big news item today. Recently, Carnival announced, in fact, I think on January 1st, they announced that they are going to be charging for room service in the near future. I don't think it's happening immediately. If anybody knows the effective date, please feel free to leave it in the chat. But they will continue to offer free breakfast or free continental breakfast, but then they will start charging for other items. And there's a lot of reasons for this. It's been very controversial online. As with any change or when something's being taken away or a charge is being added, people get pretty fired up. But the cruise line's intention is to eliminate food waste and to provide a better service. So we're hoping that that's the case. I know everyone has an opinion on it. I'm going to go ahead and leave my opinion out of it. But... Feel free to chat about it if you guys would like. What they're doing is they're charging per item. So now if you want a sandwich or some wings or something like that for lunch, you're gonna pay about, I think the items run about two to five dollars per plate. So it's not a per service charge, it's a per plate charge. So I think what they're hoping will happen is that people will order less, be less wasteful, not abuse it as much, and as a result, the line can provide better service faster service and there will be, you know, less abuse of the system. So we're going to go ahead and get started with questions. Peggy said, are there any things you would do differently on your last cruise, Cruise Tips TV? Oh my gosh, Peggy, there always are. We always learn so many things from these cruises, right? There are several things that we would do differently. Number one, I would do anything I could to get a direct flight home from Singapore and not have to handle that. The, the connection that we had, the long layover that we had, that killed us. We had two weeks of jet lag as a result. I'm sure that coming home, no matter what, we would have been exhausted and jet lagged, but we knew the flight was gonna be hard. It was just a lot harder than we expected. So on a long haul flight like that, I've learned my lesson and I'll try to avoid very long layovers. And when you're, you know, when you're flying more than 10 or 12 hours, I think it's great to have a direct flight. So that's something that I would change. Another thing I would change is I should say we got guides in a couple of cities. And while the guides were extremely helpful, and I don't think that we would have been able to navigate the cities very well on our own, I think we were tired. And it's in some cases, I think that we had it was a little too much for us. I think we were we were burned out and we needed a little bit more downtime. I can't say I would have not had those guides though because they were both great and they were wonderful experiences, but 
I think I might really carefully think about my plan. And I think one thing that I would do differently is maybe just plan really short excursions, four hours or less, and then give yourself some downtime to rest, to do something on your own, to explore on your own, maybe start the day with a guide, and then move on to having some time to yourself. So not a regret, but food for thought and a learning experience for us. Um, okay, so Mel said, what's going on with the Bahamas now? I got a letter saying they're cutting your time there. Yeah, Mel, there's so many different, there's so much stuff going on with NASA right now with the government. I don't know the details on that, but you might want to listen to Cruise Radio about the latest news on that or look at cruiseradio.net and see if Doug has some of the latest updates on that. All right, Terry needs to know um, best snorkeling. Where should she go? San Juan, St. Thomas, St. Martin, or Grand Turk and Tortola? What's best for snorkeling? Out of those, I don't think San Juan is going to be your best bet, but we'll let our subscribers weigh in on that. I think Grand Turk is more of a beach day, so I think it's going to be between St. Thomas and St. Martin. And I think um, I think we'll let our subscribers tell you where they like to snorkel in St. Thomas and St. Martin. Jillian said, "Has anyone ever used a garment duffel to hold formal night outfits?" Yeah, we've done it. Jillian, we find that it's okay and I have a garment duffel but it's one extra bag you have to haul around I prefer to use clear plastic dry cleaning bags and place the formal night items at the top of my suitcase laid flat in those um, in those bags by the way you guys we changed our set what does everybody think about the look and feel it's not super different but we've completely shifted directions in our um, studio literally moved everything to a different wall so I'm curious to hear what you think Aubrey said I have a question oops Aubrey I didn't get your question um, it's blank Colton B when you carry when you pack carry on only what do you have to do what do what all do you have to take out to show TSA? Colton, that's an excellent question. Mr. Chris Tips TV, did you see that question? When you do carry on only, what you have to take out for the TSA? It's laptops, right, honey? You have to take a laptop out of your suitcase and then you have to, sometimes you take your liquids out and sometimes you don't. You know, honestly, yeah. I, I never know for sure. I look for the, I look for the signs because one thing I really don't like to do is take my cameras out because I have mm -hmm. a bunch. And sometimes there are signs that say you have to take the cameras out and that drives me bananas. Yeah. Um, but it just, it kind of just depends. And I don't know if it's airport that changes it or if they're always adjusting the issues, I the know. TSA issues. But this last time we just took out the iPads and my laptop. That's all I had to take out. Okay. Laptop and iPad. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then t sometimes they tell you to leave your TSA liquids in. So, Colton, it's varying by airport. I want to give a shout-out and a hello to Matt from Royal Caribbean Blog who jumped in. Guys, Matt's a Royal Caribbean expert, and when you've got him here, you can ask him a couple questions. He might be able to help you out if he can. I'm not sure if he's multitasking, but um, Matt, tell your wife that you too can have a set like this. This is our living room, and it was actually, that's a roll of paper back there and a, and a not-so-fancy bookshelf that we got on Amazon. I like your set, though, Matt. I like seeing all your, um, your souvenirs and your tchotchke, your paraphernalia, whatever you want to call it. I love looking at your shelf. I think it's really fun. Okay, next question. Naomi said, on Diamond Princess, were there activities that you needed a pre-book, like cupcake making classes for kids, character breakfasts? No, nothing like that at all. And the kids' activities are all centered around the, the um, Camp Adventure Kids Club. So they do everything in the kids' club. And it's super awesome for kids, by the way. I was blown away by the kids' program on Diamond Princess. It was our son's favorite kids club experience ever. He didn't want to leave. He loved the activities. They showed great movies. They played games. He learned to play Uno. He made friends. I mean, they schedule something different every hour. Arts, crafts, they go out for pizza. They do incredible things, but no, nothing you have to pre-schedule. Um, Lauren said, what cruise line has the best deal for the single traveler cost-wise? Well, Lawrence, it would be tempting to say Norwegian because they have those single cabins. But do your research and check around because you might find that you can get some deals or sometimes you'll see the single supplement waived on other lines. But of course, our, our go-to answer is to price out the single um, staterooms on Norwegian. Hunter said, best time to cruise to Alaska. Hunter, my favorite time to cruise to Alaska is mid to late May. I'm biased. It's always been sunnier for me. It's been warmer. It's been less rainy. And I love it. You may see less wildlife, though. All right. 
Vicky Macron says, what is the best way to pack liquids if carrying carry-on only? Vicky, that is such an excellent question. You are bound to the TSEA regulations, the 311 rules. If you're not familiar with those, look them up. But I will tell you that after watching SoCal Seth's new packing video this morning, I have been inspired. I'm going to buy a TSA approved clear bag on Amazon. I will post a link for you. When I'm done with that, I'll post it over on Facebook and let you know how I like it. But I'm going to switch from court Ziploc bags to a TSA approved bag that I buy on Amazon and you just have to limit it to one bag per person. We never have an issue with that. We usually use two Ziploc or TSA bags for three people and that's plenty for us. Gaming Tech said, hey everyone, I'm planning a cruise soon, but I'm wondering, since I'm not sure if my schedule will correspond with the dates of the cruise, what should I do, wait to book or book it now? I would wait the Gaming Tech because there's nothing worse than having to cancel a cruise. So you might lose your ideal stateroom, but my advice as a gal who's had to cancel a cruise a couple of times, it's a bummer, I would wait and just try to, you know, get your dates of availability ironed out first and then backfill into that. Rosalinda said, what are the best deals you've seen come out so far in the new year? Rosalinda, I haven't really been looking. I have to be honest with you. I've been so busy with work and life, um, taking down the Christmas tree, getting back into the swing of things that I haven't really looked. But the one thing that really stands out that I've heard about that I've seen is that Norwegian is offering an incredible deal. They're giving you all six perks on some sailing. So if you're a Norwegian fan, instead of getting two or three perks or one or none, you might be able to get all six, probably would check into that. Wendy said, I've heard rumors about Half Moon Key being canceled a lot and possibly being taken off of itineraries for some reason. Anyone heard anything about it? The reason, Wendy, that Half Moon Key gets canceled a lot or any private island where you tender and do not dock is unfortunately due to high winds and the fact that it can suddenly become very unsafe to tender everyone ashore. I have not heard anything about it being canceled. That may be true, but I haven't heard. Um, but yeah, ba based on weather, you really do run the risk of missing your private island at times. Aubrey says, do you have any tips for Mexico? I'm going in February on Carnival Inspiration. Aubrey, my number one tip for you would be watch our vlogs. Carnival Inspiration just goes to Ensenada and Catalina. You're not going that deep into Mexico. Um, I can tell you that we went to we went on the cruise line excursion to La Bufadora. It was a blowhole. We felt very safe. It was literally like twenty dollars a person for the excursion. Really, really fun. I've seen some other vloggers do other excursions recently in Ensenada that looked really fun. Visiting wineries, horseback riding, zip lining are all fun things to do. I would suggest either stay on the ship or do an excursion in Ensenada, but don't just get off and walk around. You will not find anything yet until they improve that port. Connie said, um, you have to take out motors on CPAPs. Okay, that's a tip from Connie. Colton says, does Princess has breakfast, have breakfast in the dining room as well as the buffet? Absolutely, Colton. Yes, Princess does have breakfast in their main dining room and it is lovely. They have a wonderful menu. They have everything from granola, cereals, beautiful, French toast items, eggs as you like them, custom omelets, so many lovely things. Highly recommend. Derek Henderson said, in St. Martin, what's more fun in your opinion, Orient Beach or Maho Beach? Well, Derek, I've never been to either, so team Cruise Tips TV, let's tell Derek, what do you prefer, Orient Beach or Maho Beach? I think if it were me, I would try to go to Orient Beach because I know it's not right by the port and Maho's kind of sh close and you can watch the planes fly overhead, but maybe you could do both in one day, Derek. Al says, hi Sherry, have you done a Canada and Colonial America cruise? Do you have any tips? I've done, um, Al, we've done Canada and New England and it's fantastic. Um, Holland America is a wonderful cruise line for those itineraries. I would advise you to consider Holland America. That would be one of my tips. And I would say book it. Um, we booked a wonderful itinerary for Canada, New England that started in, um, was it Montreal, Canada? Started in Montreal and ended in Boston, and I really enjoyed the fact that it wasn't a round trip, so consider that. I believe Mazdam is still doing that itinerary. Mary said, does the Kids Center cost extra on Carnival? Mary, no, it doesn't unless you're doing after hours babysitting. Mel says, question about traveling with a minor. My 16-year-old brother will be, oh, honey, can you move the um, comments up for me? I'm done with Al and Mary's comment, but I can't see Mel. Um, Mel, let's see, he lives with you. Do you need a notarized letter? Okay, let's see. 
Yes, I think you do need a notarized letter, Mel, um, but please call the cruise line and verify what you're going to need or ask your travel agent. Cynthia said, what makeup do you pack? I want to pack light. Yes, Cynthia, that's an excellent tip. And if you follow us on our other channel, Cruise Gear, we talk a lot about makeup for a cruise. I usually just minimize a little bit, so I'll take, if I normally in my, my everyday life, if I use a palette, an eyeshadow palette, I'm going to pick a tiny one to take with me. Um, I also take advantage of subscription box um, beauty products. My Ipsy subscription box is a lifesaver for travel size makeup. In fact, I have little tiny eyeliners, little tiny mascaras, so I use travel size and I use my Ipsy subscription. If you'd like a link to that, message me on Facebook and I'll get one for you. Misty said, we're going on Carnival in 2020. It's our third time, but I've never heard of the shore excursion guarantee. We typically book outside the cruise line, but with the guarantee is it better to book with Carnival. Well, Misty, you know, it's really, it's really up to you. Regardless of that guarantee, cruise line excursions are, they're always going to be more, I don't want to say more safe, but you're always guaranteed to get back to the ship. Um, they will, however, be more expensive and more crowded almost always. I, and it's just a fact. I know that many people may disagree with me on that, but after 31 cruises, I got to tell you, you know, you have to make the choice. Do we still book with a cruise line? Absolutely, we still do it. On almost every cruise, we book one excursion through the cruise line and maybe a few outside of the cruise line. So you have to just use your best judgment on that. But the guarantee, they have sometimes they have price guarantees and they have return to ship guarantees. Private shore excursion providers also have guarantees that they will get you back to the ship because their reputation is completely dependent on the review that you write. And if you're late getting back to the ship, they are not gonna get any future business because you're gonna write a bad review, right? So I'm a fan of both and I think you use your best judgment. All right, Mrs. L. Jenkins said, we're doing dolphin zip excursion in Cozumel. Can you wear biodegradable sunscreen and fair skin? And I heard you can't wear any. I have never heard of the fact that you can't wear any, Mrs. L. Jenkins, but if you put sunscreen on before you leave the ship, they can't stop you. Maybe they're gonna encourage you not to add sunscreen to your body when you get there, but they can't stop you from putting it on in the morning. I've never heard that. Guys, in the chat, let, let her know because I'm not sure about that. Jessica said, how do you pack all of your extras? Toiletries, door decorations, Lysol wipes. Do you put it in a carry-on bag or everything to be checked? Jessica, we divide everything up. When you watch some of our packing videos, Jessica, go back to our packing playlist here on YouTube and watch how we do it. Most of the time, our extras all go in our, um, our checked bag. Our carry-on only includes things that we might need for the first day. So it's gonna be like a swimsuit, some sunscreen, maybe toothbrushes in our toiletry bag, and you know, things like that. Things you're gonna need on the first day, a sweatshirt, your medications, your wallet, but then everything else I usually, I usually pop it in my checked bag. Nancy said, I sent a question on Facebook about tipping the porters in Japan, osanbashi is accepted practice or offensive to do in Japanese culture. Nancy, I'm sorry if I missed your question. It is offensive, do not do it. They will not expect it. Um, we had a porter grab our bags. The tiniest, most petite little females came up and grabbed our bags when we got to Osanbashi. Before we could even walk into the port there, they walked right up, they took everything and you just don't tip them in Japan. You, tipping is not a thing there. So don't worry, it's, you're not offending anyone, but it is customary not to. Um, Jillian said, do they make up for elegant night on carnival? Oh, do they do makeup for elegant night on carnival? Oh, Jillian, you mean like in the salon? I think that on some ships they do offer makeup services. I know hair services are more popular, but I think that some of them do. Todd and Donna said, I just found out Royal doesn't have ironing rooms or washing rooms. I know they have a service. Do you pack different because of this if on Royal? Personally, when I go on a cruise line, Todd and Donna, that doesn't have irons or um, laundry, I do pack a little bit differently. I pack more clothing. I pack more wrinkle-free clothing. I'm more careful to fold things so that they won't wrinkle. And on rare occasion, I will send something out to be ironed. Um, Matt from Royal Caribbean Blog, Matt, if you're still in the chat, what do you do? with your wrinkly stuff. I know Matt dresses really nice on a cruise. He's got always like collared shirts and things like that. So Matt, do you guys send out to be ironed or what do you do? Okay. Um, G Mendez, does Carnival do high tea? Yes, they do. Watch for it on the agenda every day. 
on your carnival fun times, look in two places. Either look in the dining time section or in sort of just the activity section. And usually it's around 3, 3.30 in the main dining room, depends on the ship. Whitney said, I'm still unsure about travel insurance. I know my credit card provides travel insurance, but will that be enough? Whitney, call your credit card company and ask them if they're covering your flights. Ask them where you can read about the policy for your cruise and compare it to a policy through a third party provider like AIG, Travel Guard, TripInsurance.com, something like that. But get on the phone and call them and ask them about the insurance before you make that decision. But it is a thing that your credit card could cover you. So I, I think that's wonderful and you should explore it. Aw, Cats R Us said, what has been your favorite cruise so far out of the 31? Cats R Us, I don't have a single favorite. But we have a lot, we have several cruises that stand out in our mind and kind of in our heart. You know how that happens. Um, this Asia cruise on Princess was exceptionally memorable. And as a family, we really relaxed, we slept well, we enjoyed ourselves. We really got into the relaxation of a cruise because it was 12 nights long. I will also say that the MSC cruise that we did um, recently to the Caribbean was probably one of our best family adventures of all time. We had so much fun and did so many crazy things on that cruise that that one's really gonna stand out. Um, we love Alaska. Alaska is very special to us. I would say that when we went on our Holland America cruise to Canada, New England, that was really incredible too because it was just so it was just so nice to cruise in a suite, and we we got a, an accidental deal on a suite. We don't normally cruise in suites, but that was really lovely, and Holland America service is just exceptional. We've had a lot of fun cruises. I don't have any favorites, but I also really loved the Sea of Cortez, the 10-night itinerary from Los Angeles with Princess down to the Mexican Riviera, and the cities like Laredo and La Paz that you don't normally get to, men, uh, to visit are really beautiful and special and we loved that cruise too. Margie said, sailing out on Norwegian Sky on Monday, what is the best way to hold down the shower curtain when you shower? You could put um, you could put a um, clothes pin on it, but usually I just let it hang. We don't use anything to do that. But if anybody has any tips, we'll let you know. MS says, do you have a 90 day, 60 day, 30 day until cruise less? Yes, MS, we do have exactly that in our Intro to Cruising Masterclass. We have a link to our Cruise Tips TV Academy in the description for this video. There is a charge for that program, it is $24.99, but if you would like to use a discount code, we're running a New Year promo, and if you use the code all aboard, you get $5 off right now. So let's check out the description, but we have all those checklists in our course. Shorty says, we are booking our first non-cruise line excursion for the Greek Isles cruise in September. We're booking through Shipmate, any tips? Yes, I do have tips for you. Um, we booked through Shipmate too on our last cruise and had an excellent experience. Um, tips would be make sure you print your voucher and take it with you. Pack some tip money, um, always a good idea, you know, five, tens, twenties, take lots of small spending bills with you and just read the fine print of your excursion like anything else and um, take a little day back. Lorelai Miller said, doing Los Veranos in Puerto Vallarta in April and Bliss, do you book directly through the ship or direct? Usually with Los Veranos, Lorelai, you have to book through the ship. Usually Vallarta Adventures closes off that excursion for independent people. If they know you're on a cruise, they're gonna force you to book it with the ship, usually. Diane Rich Photography said, how far in advance do you book your shore excursions? Eh, 30 to 60 days, Diane. Usually not too much more than that, unless I think it's in high demand. Like if I was going to Nachi Kakom in Cozumel, I might book that as far in advance as I could because I know they have a 100 person limit, but not too, too far in advance. All right, Crazy Cat Traveler said, is it hard to cancel? There's an upcoming cruise show with low, low deposits, but still not sure I can afford it this year. Well, Crazy Cat Traveler, that depends on whether or not it's a non-refundable deposit. So be careful about that. Um, if you have a, you know, a, a, refund, a fully refundable deposit and you know the terms of cancellation, it is not hard to cancel at all, but you have to cancel within a certain period. All right, Ella said, does the ship time change with the local time of each port visitor or does it remain on the same time as the port of embarkation? Ella, totally depends on the cruise. Usually it changes to match or, or somewhat closely match the visited port, not stay on time with the port of embarkation. 
Paula Richards said, I'm going on Norwegian out of New Orleans in December and I have a studio cabin booked. I'm an old single lady. Will I feel out of place and do they book a group excursions for single people? Paula, you're not going to feel out of place. There is generally a concierge in the singles area on Norwegian cruises on some of the ships. I just missed which ship you were on. I'm so sorry. Um, but they'll have... Um, They'll have meetups and things like that, and hopefully you can make some friends. I do not think you're gonna feel out of place. I think you should go for it. Okay, let's see. Melissa says, is the bottled water you can pre-buy for your room the same type you can buy on the ship? Usually it is, Melissa, but if, depending on the cruise line, if you pre-purchase it, it's usually cheaper than if you buy it on the ship. So we always pre-purchase it if it's available and if it's reasonable, okay, cool. It's a busy chat today. Mr. Cruise Tips TV, how many people do we have? in the chat a lot okay 368 okay okay cool diane said have you ever booked through mass sites like expedia travelocity yeah i booked a cruise through priceline one time and it was an okay experience but it's not something i'd really recommend i just got a really good deal and i went for it and i had an agent that i could contact like someone at priceline but uh not my favorite way of booking so yeah all righty um, Ashley Marie said, I'm going on MSC Seaside in 2020 July. Any tips? Also, when the MSC Marine Reserve comes out, can you review it? Sure. Yeah, we can do that, Ashley Marie. And do I have tips for you? Yeah, watch our vlogs. Ashley Marie, um, I would suggest that you book, if you can book one of the higher experiences, like the Aria experience or possibly the Yacht Club, I would recommend that for MSC. I think you're gonna have an excellent, excellent experience in the Aria experience and it's pretty affordable and there's a lot of inclusions. Um, watch our vlogs on MSC. I expect it, the food to be a little bit different than what you're accustomed to. It's more of a European flair. Even on Seaside, you're gonna notice some differences. So get ready to enjoy that. Get ready to accept the differences a little bit and get ready to enjoy some delicious pizza. I would recommend you check out the specialty restaurants, especially the Teppanyaki and Ocean K. We didn't get to have dinner in Butcher's Cut, but I've heard it's great. So those are some tips for you. All right. Jill said, before you went to Japan, you were worried about language and the money exchange. How did it go? Jill, thanks for asking. We were worried about it, so we did a lot of research, and we followed the same protocol in each um, town. We just learned a few basic words in each language, and that worked out great, and we did just fine, but we found that people spoke English pretty widely, um, and we did okay getting currency. We got our own currency at the airport in Japan, excellent exchange rate, watched a YouTube video on exactly how to do that, and I'm so glad that I did. And it went better than expected. I loved kind of being out of our comfort zone though, Jill. It was really fun <clears throat> to be, <coughs> excuse me, out of our comfort zone. Excuse me, guys, I need to take a drink. I've got a little cough. <coughs> All right. Hi, mom, I see you in there. <laughs> Bear with me, guys. I've got a tickle. And I don't want to start talking too soon, or I think it's gonna it's gonna come back with a vengeance. <coughs> All right. Tim says, which cruise line is best for cruising Alaska? Tim, there are so many options now, so it really depends on what cruise line you normally like to cruise with. <clears throat> with that said, if I didn't know what cruise line you liked, and I had to be you know, just giving you my preferences, I would say to consider Princess or Holland America for Alaska because they have a ton of experience in that market and they do it beautifully. However, if you love Royal Caribbean or you love Norwegian or you love Disney or you love Celebrity, you have all those options too. So book with the cruise line that you love. <clears throat> G Mendez says, what would you say was the best highlight of your most recent cruise? Little things, G Mendez, very little things were the highlights. The fact that it was 12 nights was heaven, heaven. Being able to really relax into a cruise was so good. The staff and the crew were precious on this cruise. Um, if I had to pick one thing though, I would say my son's um, experience with the Children's Center, Camp Discovery, I think it's called, was unbelievable. It changed him. He he made new friends, he grew his confidence, he learned new things, He he just, 
this little man was so happy. So I think that was a highlight for us. But the ports were so lovely too. We fell in love with Japan and we're gonna go back to Japan. We're already kind of peaking at cruises. We're not, we're not gonna plan one for a while, but I gotta tell you, Japan's cool. Sydney said, what is an activity or excursion that's a can't miss? Sydney, do you mean for Japan? Um, <clears throat> you know what I'm gonna say, Sydney? I'm not gonna do an excursion. I'm just gonna say, don't miss the send off parties. In these ports, in so many of the ports, the locals come down and either perform or just stand and wave. And it's so old fashioned and so moving to be out on the promenade deck or on your balcony or whatever and see people waving lights or smiling and, and expressing their appreciation for you visiting their country that I was crying like every time I'd be on the balcony going, oh my God, this is good. You know, it's just so old fashioned and beautiful. So don't miss that if you do Asia. Okay. Um, Ofe Bell says, sailing Royal Caribbean from TPA, Western Caribbean. I just missed the rest of the question, Mr. Chris Tibbs TV. I think it said, will the seas be calm? Was that what it said? Oh, will the seas be calm? You know what? Usually they are, but you never know with the Caribbean. It's really hit and miss. That's technically just right on the verge of winter and spring. <clears throat> so your guess is as good as mine, but I wouldn't worry about it. I would just say that. Try not to worry. All right. Um, CBCI Mutebi on Carnival said, does the price of Wi-Fi vary on the, sh vary on the ship? You know, I kind of think that um, they're trying to standardize it a little bit more, but there may be some variance on the daily plans. Okay. Brigilda said, what are your thoughts on booking a sail away balcony on Norwegian Bliss? Too risky. I would not hesitate to do that at all, Brigilda. Yeah, you could end up, excuse me guys, I'm so sorry. I have been fighting a little... It's, I'm not sick, but I've had something going on with my vocal cords for two weeks. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if I have laryngitis, but I otherwise feel normal, but sometimes things just go a little awry, so I, I apologize. Um, the only thing you have to worry about, Brigilda, is the location of your cabin, but otherwise you can save a ton of cash. Uh, you might miss some of the perks. You might, you know, you might miss having the dining package or the drink package. So really look at the cost comparison. If you're saving a ton of money though, I would do it, Brigilda. I've considered it before and I would do it. Jennifer said, what is the process if you buy Carnival gift cards to add them to your sign and sale card for drinks and other things? Can you do it online ahead of time? I don't know the answer, Jennifer, but I know that our community knows. I know we've talked about this before. So team, let's help her out. Roland said, do you guys know if Regal Princess has the daily unlimited Wi-Fi? It was so great last year, but you heard they're getting rid of it. Roland, I don't know if they have daily unlimited, but I think that they do. Um, anybody know? Anybody been on Regal lately? Melissa said, would you recommend first-time cruisers to book specialty restaurants for a seven-day cruise or enjoy the included food for your first cruise? Depends on the cruise line, Melissa. Um, I would say probably one or two only on your first cruise, but yes, I would go for it. Don't do too many though. Just, just keep it light and then enjoy. <clears throat> okay. Let's see here. Oh, Misty's clarifying the 110% guarantee. Yeah. If you can find the same excursion for the same price, they'll do the 110% thing. And I think that's a really smart new thing that they're doing. So yes, um, I had that guarantee on my snorkeling excursion that we did in Cabo last year and no, but nobody else offered the excursion. It was like unique to Carnival. So I, I don't think there was another option. Um, <clears throat> I don't know Maureen if there've been technical issues on Regal. I'm so sorry, I'm not sure. Fran said best time of year for an Asian cruise. Fran, any time of year for an Asian cruise. Depends on what you wanna experience. If you wanna see the, um, the cherry blossoms, then you need to book a cherry blossom season cruise. If you want to cruise when it's cool, book winter. It's definitely going to be cool It depend in, you know, in the northern areas. Once you get down to Southeast Asia, it'll be really warm no matter what time of year. But you have to be careful about summer because then summer can be brutally hot. So for us, we liked winter a little better because we don't like brutally hot weather. But we did get to experience everything from winter to beautiful tropical weather in Southeast Asia. All right. <clears throat> Uh, Janet wants to know how crowded will Getaway be out of NOLA? Um, they're used to smaller ships. You know, I don't think you're going to find Getaway to be super crowded, Janet. I think you're going to feel like, though, because it's a big ship, there will be more lines for things, more waiting, and things will be a little less personal. That's just because it's a big ship, not because it's Getaway. That's just the way it is on bigger ships. It's the reality. 
Okay. Jesse Jones, how was the weather on a Mexican Riviera cruise in May from LA? May is a really nice time of year to cruise to the Mexican Riviera, Jesse, but it can be pretty rainy. Um, it can rain. It depends. We've done May and had dry weather. It really just varies, but I wouldn't hesitate to do it. Do plan on it be being still very cool on your sea days. So don't pack all resort wear. You need a sweatshirt and some jeans and maybe a jacket for those sea days down and the sea days back up. I would recommend that for sure. Okay. Lots of people in the comments today. I hope that everybody's um, getting their questions answered. Um, no, we've never done horseback riding MS ever on the beach. I've done horseback riding in um, Puerto Vallarta when we did an ultimate zip lining excursion, but it wasn't on the beach and it was really fun. But you can go horseback riding on the beach in Cabo San Lucas. You can do it in Ensenada and I'm sure you can do it in some ports in the Caribbean. So if anybody knows where to horseback ride, let's let her know. Okay. Angie, I have not announced the next cruise yet. We do know when it is. I'm only waiting um, for a week or two just to finalize some details. I think we'll probably be announcing it by early February, if not sooner, and we're really, really excited. Okay. Yes, Journey with Love Hurts. May is a wonderful time to cruise to Alaska. Not only is it less expensive and less crowded, but the weather to me has been better. Don't quote me on that because that could change for you, but we've had the most sunny conditions when we've been to Alaska in May. We love it. A lot of times we'll do that Memorial Day weekend time, you know, save a vacation day from work and do that. So, all right. Um, Mr. Chris Tips TV, do you feel like we're um, <clears throat> caught up here? Okay. So I see Rebecca saying, when does wave season start? Rebecca, I'm going to tell you exactly what those dates are. Let's see. I think, I mean, it's it's happening now, we know that, but I think it's something like the three months between January through early April. I know a lot of times people will correct me when I talk about this because I haven't memorized it. It's January until March. So, you know, winter when people are freezing <laughs> and they're like, I'm cold. I want to get on a cruise. Please help me. Um, SS Vacationista needs some Key West tips. Let's help SS Vacationista out. I've never been, so we will let you know. Cats R Us, have you ever been on an Australian cruise? You just found our channel the other day, so you haven't got a good chance. No, Cats R Us, we haven't been to Australia on a cruise yet. We hope to go to Australia and New Zealand on a cruise one day. I've visited both countries for a month when I was 16, and I absolutely loved Australia and New Zealand. So now that our sun's getting bigger, we're probably going to get back there someday. Um, UNH wants to know if anybody's ever cruised with P&O cruises. I haven't, but we can let you know here in the chat if anyone's ever done that. Okay. Um, let's see. Lori said, going on a cruise in two weeks on Royal Caribbean, you purchased the key. Anyone have experience with this add-on perk? I don't have experience with that, Lori, so we'll have to see what our subscribers say today in the chat. I've never, I, I think I've heard of the key. I feel like I heard about it on Matt's podcast, the Royal Caribbean blog podcast, but I don't know what it is. I'm so sorry. Angie says, you guys cruise on Princess a lot. Do you share your loyalty status and what kind of perks do you get? Oh, that's a great question, Angie. Yeah, we are. We do have the most amount of loyalty on any cruise line um, on Princess. We've sailed with them the most. I think we're getting close on Carnival. The perks that we get are when you're platinum on Princess, you get priority embarkation. Priority debarkation. You get um, access to the VIP lounge, which has discounted cocktails and free snacks every night. So you'll have drinks for about $6, and that runs from about 5 to 7 p.m. on most ships. And it's really, really nice to go have a $6 martini or so you save some money. Um, Trying to think of what the other perks are. Those are the significant perks. You don't get any free alcohol or anything except for at the Captain's Circle Party, then you do, but that's a normal part of most cruise lines. When you go to those loyalty parties, they, they pass out free drinks and things like that, so that's not too unique. But not a lot of, not a huge amount of other things. And if you want to check it out, Angie, they do have their platinum perks listed on the website. You could look at those too. Okay. Diana says, hi, Sherry. Uh, were we supposed to tip our dining room staff and stateroom attendants at the end of the cruise? Well, Diana, on all cruise lines that I can think of these days and the mainstream ones, your tips are automatically added to your stateroom. So then you have the choice of, would you like to add more or give them some cash? And that's really personal. It's up to you. Sometimes we do give an extra 20 or 40 bucks. Sometimes we don't. It just depends on the service. Um, 
Dipshipka, what is Cozumel mid-January? Do you mean what is the weather like? It's ideal. It should be great if that's what you're asking. I'm not sure. Melody said, are there any new cruise ships you're looking forward to trying? Yeah, definitely. Melody, I think we would like to get on a newer cruise ship um, in the next little bit. I'm interested in Carnival's newer builds. Obviously, we'd really love to get on Carnival Panorama. That's coming later this year, so that's definitely on our wish list. Very interested in trying MSC's new ship over in the Med, MSC Meraviglia. We are also interested in sailing with Royal Caribbean at some point, and I'd love to be on Celebrity Edge. I mean, they're real. I'd love to get on any new ship. We like smaller ships and mid-sized ships better than those big ships, but I'm really eager to experience a new ship like that and to bring the experience to you guys. Okay. Um, Rhonda, is it a good idea to purchase bottomless bubbles on Carnival? If you're going to drink more than maybe four sodas a day, Rhonda, it might be. Just be aware that they probably will be, it'll be bar Coke, bar soda, or out of the, you know, out of the bar thing instead of canned. So if you prefer canned, you might want to buy them, buy the can instead, because with the soda package, you are going to be getting it out of the, the bar gun. So that's a, a small explanation of why you may or may not want to, but there are good inclusions on that, smoothies, water, things like that. So it's up to you. Lorraine said, "Are we sail we're sailing on Bliss on February 2nd. We heard Nassau's crime increase in the last little while. Straw market, you should never go alone. Yeah, Lorraine, I have heard that about Nassau and what they're advising is to not go out into dangerous areas of Nassau and to not be roaming around at night. And yes, I would, I mean, I don't go anywhere alone when I'm on a cruise, so please use common sense like you would in any port. But the advisories are certain neighborhoods and just keeping your valuables close to you. They do have to report when there's an uptick in crime, and that is true. Okay, Hannah said, what brand would you recommend for packing cubes? Hannah, my favorite packing cubes are a three-piece set of e-bags packing cubes that are all medium. If you message me on Facebook, I'll send you a link. We post them on Facebook all the time, but I'd be happy to share them with you. Becky Hopper says, excursions for Ocho Rios other than Dunn's Falls. Becky, our favorite thing that we did most recently when we were on our MSC cruise is we went to the Blue Hole and it was so much fun. It's kind of a waterfall jumping experience. It's very, very high action and adventure. And you gotta watch our vlog from MSC Seaside for our day in Jamaica. It was really fun. Otherwise, you could do the bobsledding. There's all kinds of things you could do. Um, Lorelai said, do you have to be in a solo cabin to participate in solo activities on NCL? Single mom cruising with teens. You might be able to sneak into the lounge, Lorelai. I heard some people do. <laughs> um, you're supposed to be a part of the compound, you know, the little area, but you might be able to sneak in. Or you can just ask. Go up and ask them. Okay. Um, Kay Sorensen said, hi from Denmark. Well, hello. Hello from Denmark. You're going on Seaside in February, your first cruise. This is a good time for Caribbean. Yeah. February is a great time. Do expect that you could have some chilly days. One, uh, one experience that we had doing the Caribbean in February is it got down to 60, 58 degrees on our debarkation day and everyone was freezing. Nobody had a jacket. So pack a sweatshirt, a jacket, something like that with you just in case. But the cruise to the Caribbean will be warm and beautiful and you picked a great time. You're going to be just fine. So we're getting a little bit close to the end of our time here together, you guys. So I'm going to continue to answer questions for a few more minutes, but I do want to ask you all some questions. Earlier in the live stream, I mentioned that I want you to tell us, please, in the chat right now, what you would like to see more of from Cruise Tips TV in 2019. What would you like to see more of? You're welcome to share what you'd like to see less of, but I need you to explain that. You know, like more of this, less of this. Make sure it's very clear so that we can go back and watch it. So go ahead and go. What do you want to see more of? Is it more packing, more new ships, more of a certain cruise line. Whatever it is, go ahead and let us know. And I'm going to continue to answer questions. Mr. Cruise Tips TV, feel free um, to keep them coming. And I see one coming in from New Start 1651, honey, that's kind of for you. It says, has Mr. Cruise Tips TV purchased any cool tech lately that he's in love with? Can I tell him what you got, honey, the DJI? And you know, I haven't really tested that enough to, okay. to comment on that. I, I okay. can say that the... Um, the Insta360 One X is one of my favorite new things, but it's not for everyone. I mean, it really, a lot of people buy it and they're really disappointed because it can be, I don't know, it's just different. Mm -hmm. So, but it is my favorite new thing, yeah. Cool. And we'll let you know 
Um, new Start 1651, how we like the DJI Osmo. We did get that, but we got it too late to take on our cruise. We haven't tested it yet, but we're very excited about that product. So um, yeah, good question, I love that. Okay, um, Ken Fleming said, help! Our shorter Norwegian springtime cruise is a total party sign. A scene or is the line consistent with a calmer crowd? Ken, yes, it could definitely be a party cruise. Any three or four nighter around spring break, definitely on Norwegian or Carnival, you could have that. So I don't want you, it is not necessarily known as a calmer crowd. Norwegian's more on the party side. Um, if you want calm, you could try Princess Celebrity or Holland America, but no guarantees there either because it could be invaded. You never know. Okay. Rhonda, I don't have all the details on bottomless bubbles memorized right now, so my suggestion is you go on the website, Carnival, and look at their FAQ section and make sure you know all the inclusions. Kaylin Evans said, quick question, any and all, going on a Mediterranean cruise out of Barcelona in June, any major packing tips for these types of cruises and international flying with luggage? Yeah, so Kaylin, what I would recommend, you have to get on the website for the particular airline you're flying and look and see what their restrictions are, whether or not they follow the more American standard of carry-on only packing, or if they're limiting you to the 15, um, the 15, I think it's 15 kilograms, kil is it kilograms? Kilos, 15 kilo, I can't remember the weight of the bag. I'm so tired, you guys, I'm really sorry about that. But check the website. We, when we went to Asia, we flew, when we flew from LA to Tokyo on United, we were under the more United States based rules and regulations where your carry-on has to be a certain size, but then coming back, it completely switched over to the international. So your airline, when you book that flight, is going to tell you exactly what you can and cannot pack and how much so d depend on that and as far as other tips you do if you're flying you know if you're doing Barcelona Italy France some of those areas you have to think about pickpockets a little bit more so I would suggest a money belt I would suggest thinking about anti-theft bags no big backpacks with your wallet hanging out or easily accessible keep your money close to your body and um, yeah things like that we'll be continuing to work on international tips this year okay Let's see, um, you can move Rhonda and Kaylin's questions up for me. Yeah, perfect. Shorty said, any tips on what to take on a shore excursion when you have your, when you have to take your passport with you? You have to take your passports off the boat in Germany and Russia. Yeah, no big deal, Shorty. That happens sometimes. We've had to take our passports a couple times too. Um, you know, just keep your keep it safe, keep it deeply in your purse or backpack, and make a you know make a photocopy of it. Although a photocopy is not going to do you any good, don't worry too much. Pack what you would normally pack, and just keep that passport real safe in your bag. Um, Hannah said, "Are the kids' clubs good on any curtain cruises?" I think you mean certain cruises, Hannah, and I think you're trying to get an idea of which cruise lines have the best kids programs. Royal Caribbean, Carnival, Norwegian rank really high for their kids programs, but I will say that you don't want to overlook other lines like Princess and Holland America. Um, our son had the time of his life on a Princess cruise. Maybe not what they're known for, but it depends on what your travel goals are, so consider them all. Okay, cool. I'm going to grab a few more questions here. Mr. Cruise Tips TV, do you have more for me? Okay, good. Looks like we're caught up on questions, so this is going to be Time for us to sign off, folks. We have some really cool things coming. We have more vlogs from our Asia adventure. We've had really great responses to our first two. Um, so if you haven't seen those vlogs, please go back and watch them. We would love for you to leave a comment for us or a thumbs up uh, on those videos. They're, they're, I think they're fun. I think people are really enjoying seeing us do something totally different. We will be announcing our next cruise soon. So hopefully by early February, we're tell, we will tell you where we're going. I think you guys are gonna love this one. It's gonna be different, I'll tell you that. Something we've never done before as a family. So that's exciting. And I think that's about it for our housekeeping right now. Don't forget to DM me on Facebook if we missed you today. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and stick around. 2019 is going to be awesome, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, oh. You know what? I want to answer Al's question. Okay. This is a simple question. And oh, I like I it. Have I been, see it. I have been wanting to rant. Okay. Al, you're going to get Al, a rant. <laughs> Al is asking if we use GoPros, and I have such a love-hate relationship with GoPros. I've been using them since version 3, and I'll try to keep this rant small. But... 
ever since version three, it seems like we almost always buy one right before a cruise and sometimes like on the way to the port. And it never fails that there is always some significant bug in the newest version of the GoPro, always. And it ruins a good majority of our footage because of it. And it just happened with the seven. I love the seven, but it had a bug. And even though I tested it, I didn't catch the bug until we were on the cruise. And it's in the minute we come back, they issue a firmware update and you know, they fix the bug. But that it's, yes, we use the GoPros and I recommend them, but always watch for that very first release and wait for the, for the firmware updates because it can be really a heartbreaker to have some of your best footage ruined because of it. Panama Canal, I mean, I had so much footage ruined because of the Hero 6, and I'm gonna stop right there, end of rant, but yes, we use GoPros, wait for the firmware updates. Yeah, well, you guys too, when you're editing, and I know some of you in the house have experience editing, when you bring in footage and it's shaky or it's ruined, it is devastating because Mr. Cruise Tips TV puts a lot of a lot of energy into getting it right the first time. So yeah, he was not a happy camper when we got home and he realized all that. And it never fails that that firmware update comes out like right after the problem happens. So anyway, we still love GoPro, but I know he wanted to do a rant. We'll probably do the rant again on our Cruise Gear channel when we review our gear. One of the episodes I wanted to let you know we're gonna do over on our Cruise Gear channel is to take some of the stuff, whether it was packing, luggage, beauty, clothing, um, purses, gear, tech. We're gonna take the things that we really feel like we need to comment on that we took with us on our last cruise and do a little overview or like a gear review. It won't all be tech gear, it'll be other things too. Like I'm gonna talk about my favorite concealer, I'm gonna talk about my favorite purse, but we will also talk about the GoPro again. We'll rant a little bit there. So thank you all for being here, we appreciate it. And yeah, stay tuned for some exciting news coming soon. And thank you for all of your input on what you'd like to see from us in 2019. I will be going back and looking at all of that and putting it all into a document and seeing how we can deliver all of that awesome content to you guys. But we appreciate all of your thumbs ups. And whoever said congratulations on 60,000 subscribers, thank you so much. We hit 60,000 subscribers overnight and we really appreciate all of you so, so much. We appreciate every subscriber, every comment, every like, it means so much to us. This is our little passion project and we wouldn't be here without you guys. So keep it coming. And if you are not subscribed yet, please subscribe today. We need you. Until next time, see you on the high seas. Bye-bye. Cruise around the week. Hey, click me to subscribe.